Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are here with another Historical Humans Reacts. And because our podcast episode earlier this, or no, upcoming, it's coming up to, on uh, Monday, we are talking about the Canite peoples. So we might as well talk about Babylonia and everyone's favorite subject in school, math. How do oh, these God. all tie together? Colin, do you want to be the wonderful magician here? Sure. So um, about 3,700 years ago, a ancient Babylonian uh, whose name translates roughly as Walter White discovered the science of... <laughs> I'm completely kidding. Uh, about 3,700 years ago, uh, there is a tablet uh, from Babylon with the first and actually only complete and accurate ancient table of trigonometry. Yay, math! Yeah! Yes, yes uh, they solved mathematics. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, no. That's the point of my joke earlier. This is how I speak. <laughs> oh, boy. Remember, boy, kids, boy. don't do math. But do the, math. the interesting yeah. thing about this, uh, to talk about why it's so cool and why it's a big ordeal, is this proves certain theories within trigonometry specifically i think i was reading it talks about the ratios of triangles not in angles or circles and it uses the basic fundamental mathematical groundwork that makes up trigonometry and this yeah. predates greek understanding a trig by what a thousand years 1500 uh yeah oh, uh, the the greek father of uh of trigonometry is uh uh what's what do we call him again Hipparchus? Uh, Hipparchus. Not Hipparchus. not, not uh, Pythagoras, yeah. as we previously yeah. discussed. No, 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 that was that's off screen. That's off screen. <laughs> yeah. Tell people what went wrong off screen. I must still point it out. Um so yeah, uh Hipparchus, uh fifteen hundred years after this uh tablet was written, uh is credited with uh discovering trigonometry. Uh he discovered it for the Greeks. Um Turns out he was actually not the first, as this tablet proves. Uh, we don't know who wrote the tablet other than it was the Babylonians. And uh, one of the fun things with this for me is the Babylonians, unlike us today, uh, we have a very uh, uh, sort of Greek-style arithmetic. Uh, we deal in multitudes of 5 and 10. The Babylonians dealt in multitudes of 12. Yeah. So, fun story, or fun side note. This is how they counted. You used your knuckles. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, so that, uh, and from the Babylonians, we have things like the 60 minute hour or the 12 month year. Um, but from the Greeks, we have the uh, 100 cents to a dollar. <laughs> uh, uh... So it's, it's these both forms of math have translated into the modern world. And uh, what's very interesting about this trigonomic uh, table is that not only is it m more is it older than than the Greek ones, it's also more accurate, and it's Ooh. using the twelve system rather than the uh, ten system. So what you're saying is we shouldn't be using Greek letters in our math; we should be using Babylonian ones. Bring it back, Babylonian you, style. We, we, I, I do not think putting cuneiform into mathematical equations is helpful. <laughs> Listen, uh, I'm not in school anymore to learn math, so... Aaron did have a really <laughs> interesting point, though, that I do want to circle back to before we stray too far. The fact that they counted using their knuckles is a really common trend that you see in the very basic origins of math, is you'll see different systems of counting, and it usually bases off of how that group or how that society basically counted. Like, in our modern world we use a base five and base 10 system you ever stop to think why certain societies have a base 20 system obviously this group had the base 12 it all depends on how they counted their appendages yep i mean 10 fingers 10 toes that's 20 you really need to count? do you really need to count more than that it's also why in, in French they have the worst way of saying 80 out of any language possible, and I'm willing to fight about this. The way they say 80 is not 80. They say 420s. We don't talk about the French. And the, they say 81. 420s and 1. 
four twenties and two. No. Four score and seven years ago, Awful our fathers. forefathers. <laughs> they're not the only ones to think like that. Uh, we we who speak English just stopped talking like that about a hundred years ago. And it's been great <laughs> sense. Never again. <laughs> and France being France refuses all change to its language. Uh, if you want to know why, look it up. <laughs> or we might cover a video on it. Anymore. Yeah, I'm not starting that war. Quebecois French versus French French. Okay, no, no, we're getting sidetracked. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to the Babylonian Greek. mathematics. Get back to the ba the Babylonian Babylonian mathematics. Um, my favorite part of all of this is um at the bottom of the article there are several reactions to postings about the news, and people get so incredibly offended at the idea that a middle easterner could do math <laughs> are you talking about the miles brendage to tweet yeah i'm talking about the tweet making fun of the mile brendage tweet <laughs> or yeah that one yeah historian joran freiberg retired from schomburg's university of technology in sweden blast the idea the babylonians knew nothing about ratios of sides he wrote in an email to science i like how you could just <laughs> email science i know they're talking <laughs> about the magazine but just overall whole, he just maintains for a check that, out to science. <laughs> he maintains that P322, the tablet name, is a table of parameters needed for the composition of, and then they cut off. So yeah. Oh, uh, like, like don't get me wrong, I hate math too. However, I like the second reaction more yeah. from Marty Duran, and they figured it out three thousand seven hundred years ahead of me and counting. Yeah, uh, like I think I got a C in trigonometry in high school. After algebra, it was downhill, man. Yeah, yeah. What's What's interesting here is the the tablet actually simplifies how we do trigonometry. There's fewer steps in the mathematical process. <laughs> so it's still better than modern trig. I love it's it. better than modern trig. It is. It is better than modern trig because modern trig is is a uh, Hellenic trig. So it's the Greek version. Oh, that's awful. And Look this the version Christian. is the better version. <laughs> Are you telling me I could have been learned an easier way to do trig and I might have not gotten a C? I could have gotten, like, maybe yeah. a B. I imagine the clickbaity titles. These 10 Babylonian tricks to do easier trig. Your math teacher will hate you. Yeah, Greeks hate, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Greeks hate them. Learn the Babylonian <laughs> trigonomic secrets. <laughs> oh Learn the God. secrets now by they subscribing are. to <laughs> Historical Humans. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe yeah. if you want to know the ten easy tricks of trigonometry. Please, please, just just click just click the button so we can stop the video before okay. they get more clickbaity. Please, don't forget to click you. the bell. We need to do that as a piece of merch. But I will say we will wrap this up. Uh, it, this is just a really interesting topic, and it shows that history is constantly evolving and changing. But he's gonna find it first. Yeah. And decipher it in this case. Yeah. But if you guys enjoyed today's video, please really, if you do enjoy the video, drop a like down below. Leave a comment if there's a specific topic that you'd like us to cover. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our videos. Yep. Especially do that if you like playing hide and seek with knowledge. <laughs> yes, very much so. We'll see you guys next week with another video. Peace.